everybody. Thank you for tuning in to This Is Real with Pastor Juan Martinez, a.k.a. Dr. Love. And I'm Stephanie Rave. Man, and I am pumped. You know, uh, the premiere last week was super dope. Oh, yeah, we had a blast. Just on, um, you know, uh, Mike Servant. You know, it's crazy because when you, when you, it, we were talking about it, right, mm-hmm. post-show uh, with our guest today, which is going to be super fire. But um, I mean, you wouldn't even believe who we got in the building today. But, <laughs> you know... Um, Mike Servin, you think, you know, out of first impression and all that until you really get to meet him and talk to him and have a conversation Mm -hmm. and really get to know the why behind everything, right? Because even asking him, like, you know, I mean, when I first saw it, I thought, okay, like, yeah. Okay, is Why he all right? Because he was walking Christ. around the building yeah. like, Jesus just Jesus Christ. Like, I get he's the name of a whole name, but he'd just be like yeah. walking by. Like, yeah. he's like, hey, you're going to get pizza, Jesus Christ. I'm like, whoa, we're talking pizza, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> but when you really get to know him, it made such an impression on me and even in my wife. And yeah. I know with you too. For me, it was just so awesome because I feel like it really blessed me because it really showed how. Um, a personal relationship with God is so unique, you know, because he designed mm. us all so differently and he is very unique, right? Very that's his unique. character. That's his personality. But just as special as he is, that's how special his personal relationship with God is, right? Because yeah. God speaks to him and, you know, moves through him in that special way. And so it was just awesome. I, oh, yeah. I was telling everybody, like, you got to watch it, man. Even like, in the watch. comment section and everything and just the laughing on how he, even, you know, the whole because we threw in the relationship thing. Yeah, and then he, he kind of went into he, the relationship. Yep, that, was that was fire cool. and super yep. funny. Yeah, the guy's super funny. So I was really excited about that. Thank you so much for all the letters you guys yeah, are shout writing. Shout out to everyone um, writing mm-hmm. us. Anyone who subscribed to YouTube or um, downloading the podcast, we really appreciate your support, man. We wouldn't be here without you guys, so we yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, definitely wouldn't be here. I mean, we'd be talking <laughs> to nobody if you guys weren't like <laughs> listening. So thank you so yeah. much. We really appreciate you guys listening and just all the lives that are changing. Like I got an Instagram. You know, sometimes you don't know who you're reaching, who yeah. you're impacting, and mm-hmm. I like when I get letters or like uh, messages like my dad. Listens mm-hmm. to you guys, and it's like you know that to me is like yes. Yeah, so or my mom, you mm-hmm. know, instead of like the person yeah. itself, like they yeah. got a book that sent it to a book, they got it to a, yep. so all those things are super dope. Yep, and man, we're kicking off 2022 really, 2022. really awesome, right? Yeah, we got some amazing guests, and yeah. so if you want to introduce today's. Well, you know, I'm gonna backstory. introduce. <clears throat> you know, th- well, we have two guests today. Yep, and so, you know, the main guest here today. Now, y'all ain't gonna believe this. Back from the past. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Dragon <laughs> Lee. No other podcast can do it. Yeah. No other. Yeah. <laughs> no other show care. can. Yeah, All this right, ain't like. a hologram either. Like, he's in the building. This yeah. ain't like, you know, remember when they put flesh. Tupac in, yeah, the yeah, yeah, in the hologram? Yeah. No, we got him. Like, he's here in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what's up, Bruce? What's going on? Hey, man. Welcome. And now, you know, it's funny. We did that as a funny, and you'll understand. Bruce Dragon Lee is an awesome person. Yeah. But he is the cousin of NFL. Play. I'm gonna say NFL superstar. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna do that. Why yeah. not? Right. Speaking to existence. Yeah, that's uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. NFL superstar. Uh, you know, you might know him for the commercials. You know, he was waving the hair. <laughs> Yo, yeah, yeah. he was waving the hair. And knowing him, that had me rolling. You know, like mm-hmm. this dude is waving the hair. Yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Grant Stewart. What's up? What's, What's up? What's up, man? What's going Welcome, down? you guys. <laughs> What's yeah. happening, man? How are you? I'm really good. Uh, just really, you know, upset that the season is over for, for us and the team, but definitely happy to come to Texas and visit some family, spend some time yeah. with my wife's family and, you know, Bruce and his wife, and really just enjoyed my time here this week. So And that's got really to, cool. you know, yeah. come yeah, to yeah. get wrapped. I ain't that's been there dope. in a minute, you know. Oh, <laughs> man, that's what's up, man. Yeah, it was great. Cool. It was awesome. And, yo, so Mr. Irrelevant. Mm-hmm right yes and so it's wild how uh tell us a little bit about that moment and then we're going to kind of talk a little bit about your past and stuff. but yes. i, I want to talk about the moment where you're like waiting you know you get the word you know the lord gave you a word mm-hmm. uh but you're waiting yes because that's probably a long wait <laughs> to get picked at that moment right you're yes. probably just waiting so tell us a little bit about that day what did it look like well um you know just leading up to the whole draft um i kind of had a projection of going around rounds four, five, maybe six at the latest. Um, and, you know, just leading up to the draft, things, I don't want to say were falling apart, but there was just like a lot of things weren't working out in my favor. Like um, before the senior bowl, I had gotten a, a pulled hamstring. And then mm-hmm. uh, before the combine or my pro day, um, I had to get surgery on my hip to make sure I was ready for the season. So I didn't get yeah. to put any numbers down 
and I'm not the tallest or the strongest or like the biggest. So all I really got to do was the bench press that I did for uh, uh, Hills, Hills and Halos. Halos. Yeah. Um. So that's like all they had was like, oh, I guess like he's strong, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, what, we what think he's strong. <laughs> yeah. We don't even know nothing else. Like, right. You're like, Lord, it worked for Samson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's really all they had on me and uh, you know I did my best in my interviews and everything like that but like all I had was just like my film and my bench press they didn't really know how fast I was or anything like that I was Mm. playing in the American Conference which isn't like Power 5 I'm playing at the University of Houston so it's not like I'm playing at the University of Texas so like there's a question of like who am I going against this whole thing Mm. Um, even if I'm having great film it's like yeah but you're not playing Alabama so yeah. we want to see how fast you are. And they didn't really get an opportunity to see that. So I kind of knew that going into the draft. Um, but there were so many teams I was talking to, and I just could have sworn I was getting drafted, you know, round five at the latest just because of the communication that was yeah. going back and forth. Um, and like you said, um, pre-draft, a good friend of mine uh, named Anthony had came to me and told me, like, hey, the Lord told me you were going to be drafted. And I'm like, you know, every, every time somebody has came to me and said, hey, the Lord told me such and such, it has come to fruition every yeah. single wow. time, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, so I'm like, okay, like bet, like, huh, like stress off of me, like I'm, I'm inviting people over, we're having a whole draft party, you know. <laughs> and my agent was like, look, Bruce, like you there too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And my agent was like, look, like you know, really hope you get drafted, but like there are some teams like reaching out saying they're not going to draft you, mm-hmm. and they want to be the first ones to offer you that free agent deal. So I'm going throughout the whole draft, kind of with a whole lot of things in my mind. Um, start to get into like the seventh round. And I still haven't been drafted, and they're not drafting that many players at my position. So, yeah. like, my position really isn't getting drafted mm-hmm. uh, at inside linebacker. And so, you know, I'm literally kind of, I'm kind of stressing. There's like a couple teams, like the Giants and the Seahawks, like just reaching out, like, hey, we want to, we want to get you this free agent deal. We don't think you're going to get drafted. If you do get drafted, great. But like, the if pressure. you don't, yeah, if you don't, Ugh. you need to sign with us because we're going to offer you X amount of guaranteed money over this team, and there's a good chance you make our team. So it's like, oh my gosh, I never thought I was going to have to pick. I thought I was just going to have to wait and see. And so. <laughs> I end up like kind of putting in my mind, okay, I'm gonna go to New York. I'm gonna go be a giant because I really enjoyed Coach Judge, yeah. um, and he really spent a lot of time with me on uh, video calls. And he spoke with me at the Senior Bowl, the head coach of the Giants um, mm-hmm. at the time. Mm. And um, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to New York. Like I know he he likes me, and I know I have a good chance of making the team. And so like, but I'm really not happy about it. I didn't want to go there. I didn't really, you know, I had a passion about taking care of my family, housing my siblings. Um, you know, just got a, a new wife at the time. Yeah. Um, so didn't really want to, <clears throat> to I guess, wasn't excited about that transition mm-hmm. living in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if I could get it done. Yeah, yeah. Um, totally so, understand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so my wife really just, I went in my own room away from everybody else. My wife brought me in there and uh, uh, I believe it's like Matthew 626, just like, you know, do the birds worry? Like yeah, she was yeah. telling me like, like don't even. yeah, yeah. Yeah, six, yeah. yeah. Six, six, six. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, do the birds worry? Like, there's no need in you worrying about this. The Lord has already told you what's going to happen. And, you know, she sat with me and prayed with me. And, um, you know, after, like, there's probably maybe, like, two picks left in the whole draft. And I'm just, like, I'm telling everybody, like, I'm going to New York. Like, I see the two teams left on the board has already drafted linebackers. Like, why, yeah. were, why are they going to draft? Everything's me? slow motion. Mm-hmm. I never, <laughs> never talked to the Washington football team. Never really spoke to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're, like, the only two teams left. Um, and so I'm really just watching the draft at this point, hoping, you know, maybe one of my friends gets drafted, somebody I mm. trained with. And I get a call from uh, from Tampa Bay and uh, everybody's like, oh, he's going to call because like, I wouldn't get no calls. obviously. <laughs> um, so I answered the phone. But if I was getting a call, it was to talk about free agency. So I was receiving a lot of calls towards the end of the draft. Yeah. So I answered the phone and said Tampa Bay. And I'm like, hello. And it was the GM. Uh, of the team Jason Light and he said hey have you figured out where you're going in free agency that's the first thing he said and I was like before I got a chance to respond I was going to be like well no (laughs) he was like well you're not going to have to because we're going to draft you right here with the last pick in the draft Mm. and uh man (laughs) hold on hold on I was going to Bruce Leroy (laughs) (laughs) tell me uh Okay, because you're watching the, the whole thing. Like? What yeah, was the room, what's the room like? Right? Because now the room you, like? you love your cousin. You're like, man, you support. Everyone's all together. But mm-hmm. then you, you probably feel a little nervous too, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. the Lord spoke to him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the room was very tense. You know, we all want to see him go to the league. We all want to see him do good. Oh. Um, and for me personally, like, the Lord spoke to me also in mm-hmm. a dream. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in 2019. I never told him about it. 
I just kept it to myself. It was one of those things, you know, yeah, yeah, when the yeah, Lord yeah, tell yeah. you, don't tell nobody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I kind of kept it to myself. And so the whole time, it's getting lower and lower um, in, the, in the draft. And I'm like, man, is he going to go? I'm starting to doubt what God showed me. <laughs> Yo, that's what happened. Yeah. 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 So come on. Yeah. yeah. So I was starting to overthink it. But everyone in the room was very tense and uh, just uptight. And he would get a phone call. And we were all looking over at him like, what's going on yeah um, he would go to the room we all got worried sick and we just all started preparing ourselves like to be there for him mm. um if he didn't get drafted you know yeah. just picking him up saying he'll you know do good things in yeah. the league regardless if he goes in free agency or not yeah so mm. yeah that's cool. man that's and cool. so boom they tell you're gonna get picked yes they hit you with the it's almost like the last shall be first right because it's almost like right. the, if they would have picked you right before mm -hmm. you wouldn't have been mystery relevant correct mm -hmm. <laughs> It, it, I mean, yeah. right? It's yeah. one pick before, yeah. and it changes things because yes. Mister Irrelevant is still highlighted. Yes, right mm -hmm. to the world. Yes, right because mm -hmm. it's like Mister Irrelevant, one pick before. <laughs> yes, and you don't get Mister Irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's kind of like the Lord yeah. prepped it yeah. and strengthened your faith, right? Because after sure. that, you're like, I know the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. it's, and I try to explain it to people because um, it's like maybe like fifteen, sixteen hundred of us seniors or juniors that left early that decided, hey, we're gonna try our shot at the NFL. And there's only 259 of us that get picked. Mm. Um, and I was number 259, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I try to explain it to people, like, the no, I was the goes final crazy, one. Right? Yeah. The house goes crazy? So oh, basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. But basically, whenever they told me on the phone, like, I'm listening to the head coach, to the GM and all of that, they're like, yeah, like, we're so excited to have you, all this type of stuff. and. And like, you know, tears are rolling down my eyes, but I couldn't get excited because I didn't see my name on the TV. There was that mm. commercial. So I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're no, like, bro. No. <laughs> Plus I was streaming the draft because we didn't have cable. So I'm mm -hmm. just streaming it. Like I think through my phone or through my PlayStation. And um, I'm like, no, when I That's see my, deep. when I see my name, then I will then I will celebrate because like there was teams like the Broncos that had three picks in the seventh round like yeah we're looking to draft you right here with one of these picks and you see the mm -hmm. names and and they seen I seen everybody else's name but mine so I'm like I want to see my name on the screen then oh. mm. then I'm a like then I can continue this conversation because yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yet you know what I'm saying I'm just like taking it at face value I need to see it on the <laughs> They're screen like, what's wrong with this guy yeah. he's not even talking to us yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And so, yeah, as soon as, like, they were, like, uh, the woman announced my name, um, I mean, yeah, we went yeah. crazy. Yeah, we crazy. went insane. Yeah. And everybody started jumping on me, and I was crying. I was, like, in the ball. My wife was dead. Oh, big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's dope, man. Yeah. That that's, that's super awesome, man. But you know what? I kind of, you know, you, I know your story, and uh, you love the Lord. Mm-hmm right mm -hmm. um and so you may you make that very public you mm -hmm. know i see you still you know like i talked to you the other day on the phone and i was like man that's the super dope that you continue i know for us you know megan my wife i know stephanie like the church we kind of always keep you lifted in prayer because mm -hmm. we've had conversations where, where we're like okay you know this gets more difficult it's different mm -hmm. um in that kind of platform mm -hmm. you know you got more pressure more everything right so your prayer life so we're like always like man lord you know sustain them you know yeah. uh and then i see you you know i'm like oh this is awesome i see you doing little hand waves you know and all that and just the stuff you post um and everybody right now is like that's awesome you guys got uh an nfl player on this is real you know but the reason we got you here is because um, your life wasn't always like that, mm -hmm. right? Like you, you're in the NFL now, and everybody sees the the glory, right? They're like, wow, but nobody, uh, you know, really knows the story. Yes. And so, tell us a little bit about uh, what your childhood was like and growing yeah. up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I am the oldest of GMS, five siblings, mm -hmm. five of us, um, uh, two that were always with me, usually with same mom, same dad, and then. Yeah two that you know have different moms and we would also spend a lot of time with them as well mm -hmm. yeah um and you know i was the oldest and i didn't really realize a lot of what was going on until maybe i got like you know maybe seven or eight years old um but the reality of the situation is that you know my my parents both were struggling uh drug addicts mm -hmm. uh, growing up uh my dad super early on was would do like small stints in prison or or in jail um until I think uh, right when uh, middle school began, he went, I think, for like three and a half, which is like when it got really rough for us at home. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom uh, worked in the strip club um, in those industries. 
and so usually it was just us left alone at, at the crib mm-hmm. um you know we would go live with grandparents with uh uncles with family friends we kind of jump around we just tried to stay together until one time we had to split up um but i mean that was the reality of the situation i had to learn how to drive at 11 12 years old i would drive myself to school with um uh, you know finagle the food stamp car so that yeah. so that we could go <laughs> yeah. get something to eat you know yeah, yeah, come yeah. back with a whole bunch of beef jerky and muscle milk so i'm like <laughs> this has got to be nutritious yeah. you know um <laughs> but uh yeah just kind of grew up all over uh all over texas all over houston really like north south east west from channel view to spring uh mm. to conroe to humble uh, really just everywhere and um you know i i was always in the church i would say my grandfather um was a pastor of our church um, and I was always singing, um, and I think that initially I was I, I was just singing. You know, I wasn't singing yeah. for God. I didn't really have a relationship yeah. or a belief, I would say, in Jesus or anything like that. Never read the Bible, um, but I think I had a prayer life, um, and yeah, that's pretty much how my childhood was. You know, and 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 the dynamic of that never really changed. I was always, always, always. Even my dad got back from prison because when he did get back from prison. Um, you know, not talking bad about nobody or anything no, like that. I totally but, get it. But when it when he did come back, um, you know, he was not necessarily the best example of how to be, be a follower Father. of Christ yeah, or yeah. Um, how to be um, a great man to a woman. And um, I kind of, you know, would look at him and like that's the only example I really had. And so yeah. I kind of followed that trait as well. Um, and. I always felt like I was had to be like Superman for my siblings. You know, mm-hmm. I had to feed them, I had to help them, I had to. You took the um, responsibility in the role, right? Yeah. Right. Because um, I mean, people people don't really understand that. You know, even some people in my family, like they weren't there. Like, you know what I'm saying? And and every time I say that, it's like, oh, but no, y'all wasn't there. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was in the room with the lights <laughs> off trying to entertain us. Like, yeah. no, nah, y'all wasn't there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so that was always super passionate about that, and uh, it really it kept going. And when I got into college, it kind of started to hurt me because you know I, I chose Houston because it was close to them, mm-hmm. um, and I was mm-hmm. still going to be able to try to provide as best I could to still try to be the best example I could. Yeah. Um, and it was hard because the more I was driving back and forth from spring to downtown, I would miss practices, I would fall asleep in meetings, mm-hmm. I would miss entire days. Um, So it was really, you know, backfiring on me, you know. Um, And so at one point I had to just, um, it's like September 22nd, 2019, when I did give my life to Christ, um, that's when it all started getting better for me. And I ended up giving that to him and seeking him for what to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Dude, you need a Christian movie. (laughs) <laughs> and that should be called. I'm just saying, uh, if you out there, yeah. I, I'm just saying, I, I think the, the, you know, you always see those stories, you know, yeah. and I think your story is dope. It could mm-hmm. even be mystery relevant with the mm-hmm. message of irrelevancy, but most mm-hmm. relevant. Like, yeah. I don't know if you out there. I, I'm, I'm going to try to go get a loan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, yo, let's get together. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. 2019, how old are you at that? I was a junior in college. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. So we're going to follow up with how you actually got there, right? Because okay, yes. you gave your life, you know, at junior in college. That's a mm-hmm. whole lifetime, right? Mm-hmm. We'll be right back. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break. You guys stick around. Hey, we're back. This has been exciting. <laughs> Come on. The hand has told us to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Welcome back, you guys. Okay. So you had this crazy growing up, right? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you're a little bit more mature. Obviously, you had to mature quickly right mm-hmm. but you don't have any any belief in god necessarily mm-hmm. right you've been yeah. around it you're in church <coughs> and then you give your life to christ and i know that your your cousin bruce right you guys yes what's that's the a little bit here? about yeah 23 22 oh okay yeah, go ahead, go ahead. keep going because oh, i wanted okay. to know okay so you you're seeing this whole thing you oh see, yeah 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 okay, yeah, okay so. <laughs> you're in the room in the dark <laughs> <laughs> no but you guys are still close so obviously there's a bond there but then whenever you get saved right there's a little bit of yeah. connection there so tell mm-hmm. us how that how that went well um so you know growing up how i grew up um like I said, I was in the church, mm-hmm. um, and I, I sang in the church all the time, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of having that opportunity growing up. Mm-hmm. And I, I might not have been singing for God, you yeah. know, at the end of the day, I was just singing, mm-hmm. uh, but it definitely, when I decided to give my heart to God, it gave me the skill set to to lead worship and yeah. to, to, to be there for everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wholeheartedly feel, though, that even in that moment, mm-hmm. God's like, 
because it, I feel like it's a process, and if that's how he had to get you in the building, right? Then yeah. he, he good. He like yeah. okay, he coming. He yeah. coming. Yeah, <laughs> train up a child. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know, going into like high school, and like I said, um, I was not, I was not walking nothing out. I was. Uh, <laughs> I was, I don't want to say a horrible person, but like, that, just that, say it. No, yeah. I'm kidding. It's okay. You know, that's, this is real. real. Yeah. Yeah, like. That's, that's kind of how I look at it. You know, yeah. I really feel like yeah. I was a horrible guy. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had, you know, if, if it was like two or three girlfriends at once, or, yeah. um, you know, I was trying to do what was cool, what was mm -hmm. popping. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really just was, I mistreated a lot of people. I was a liar. Um, yeah. I was a manipulator big yeah. time. Um, and I had pride in it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of just like my, my lifestyle, and I was very selfish mm -hmm. in that way, especially the way in the way I treated women. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, me and Bruce were always, always, always close growing mm -hmm. up. Like mm -hmm. I was always at his house. I had lived with him for like maybe six months, going into high school. Um, so we almost were like we're cousins, but it was like we was like brothers almost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, in P Puerto Ricans, every cousin's a brother. Yeah. Just to let you know, like we don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when uh. I think maybe I was in like my end of my freshman year or 10th grade and uh, he had came to one of my football games and like he came over I think like the next day and I uh, was kind of just talking to me and and I was like yeah man we haven't hung out in a minute and he was like just being real like I don't think like we can kick it like that like, <laughs> yeah no yeah. Hey, hey, I want to hey, 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 hear, yeah. hear this from you I want to hear this from you <laughs> yeah so what happened you're like are moment? you breaking up with me yeah right yeah. Now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so what you hit him with so I'm just very blunt, you yeah. know, just very real. Um, mm -hmm. I have my own core values, and yeah. uh, my dad was very strict, so I'm a pleaser at heart. Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't put up with being around people that aren't doing the things that, you know, I would do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I just told him straight up, like, we can't kick it. Like, <laughs> you're not on the right thing. Yeah, like, yeah. You know? That is and, so uh, So your, your home life is totally different than his then? Yes, um, mm -hmm. the, the, I had structure where he right. didn't. Okay, yeah. you know, I had obviously every family has their thing. Right. So mine was more emotional. Mm -hmm. You know, it was less love. You know, yeah. stuff like that. But it was for him. It was a a, a safe place. Survival, it was a heaven yeah. because we had structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we had two parents in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, food. we had food on the <laughs> 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 hey, food. That was yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah. 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 I can't yeah, wait I to go see food. Food. Yeah, That's really <laughs> cool, bro, yeah. man. Sons, and, and look at, look at I, I got to pull the principle here, right? Because yeah. I think I think it's so important. Like sometimes, and how old are y'all then? 22, 22 and 23. Then. Oh, 14, 15, 16. Oh, man, think yeah. about it. Yo. It's a crucial age. Big kudos to you, uh, Bruce. Bruce, because you know what? Like, the reality is that at that age, not somebody won't be. Doing that. Somebody is not gonna say, "Hey, I you can't ain't. Kick it I with can't you. kick it with you." Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like, boom, yes. in, in yeah. a good, genuine way mm -hmm. to even know that at 15. So yeah. even yes. though you might have, you know, every home has a thing. Every atmosphere gives birth to something. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but in that atmosphere of being strict, you you were strict to them, like in a sense. You yes. know, mm -hmm. so yeah. that was dope. So then what happens? You tell him that and then Oh man. He was <laughs> like he was like, nah, like I just can't really hang out with you as much, you know, we're not going in the same direction. I feel like you on something I'm not on and I'm like, What you mean? Like <laughs> and he was like, you know, like with God and, and, and just like, you know, just like the way you're living. I was like, what you mean the way I'm living? Like, <laughs> I live right. Like, I I, I, I <laughs> yeah. pray for the football team. Like, I go to church every you Sunday. You see me bless the food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bless the food every yeah. time, twice. And he just, like, was like, yeah, but, like, you are living a way that, mm -hmm. like, you, you're doing, like, the wrong stuff. And, like, I can't yeah. just be doing the wrong stuff with you. And I'm like, okay, you know, and. I was really upset, like, but I was like defensive wow. and like reflective, like right. back at him, like, yeah. oh no, he's tripping, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. he being real, like he ain't right, you yeah, think you're yeah, you think you're better than me, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So I'm like, fine, like whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, just get, kept doing what I was doing. Might have uh, just got worse off of that, dang. you know. Yeah. A fine is over. Just give me the hot dog real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. it probably hits his ego because like mm -hmm. I was always the 
little brother Mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah i was the little cousin i looked up to him and Mm -hmm. at this time it was kind of like i was speaking down to him that's how you kind of sure that's how you see absolutely yeah Yeah, yeah, how bruce gonna tell me (laughs) (laughs) i'm knocking dudes down (laughs) i've been going i've been living right no no way he was completely correct that's that's dope and so then 15 to 2019 then this happens again similar yeah so yeah like between bruce and i like basically i would like get into so much trouble or get into put myself in a bind um i would get in like these super toxic relationships Mm -hmm. and then i would like go to bruce house like (laughs) once a month and like just like just like tell him everything and he would just kind of like be like "Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm." (laughs) i told you you're going the wrong way (laughs) bro (laughs) and 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 i already i would always know what Mm -hmm. what he wanted to say i always knew um, what was correct and incorrect and I just but he was there and he loved me wow. and he cared for me through that entire phase and he would invite me to church uh, he'd invited me to get rap when he started going there mm-hmm. cool. um, and so to talk about September 2019 um, you know I had gotten I had gotten to a really dark place maybe I don't know six to eight months before that um, where I really felt like there was nothing I could do to be different. Mm-hmm. I had consistently tried to stop being a cheater, yeah. to stop being a womanizer, to stop seeking attention from a uh, little Snapchat or whatever yeah. I was on back mm-hmm. in the gap. And um, like, I, it was like I couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't change it myself. It was like there was nothing I could do. I was just gonna be that person. Like yeah, I would lie about little stuff, yeah. like just to lie. Um, and I just felt like I was always going to be that person. There was nothing I could do to change. Mm-hmm. Um, and at, at this point, I was getting a little older. I felt like I really couldn't blame it on too many other people. When I was younger, I was like, oh, I'm like this because my dad was like this or whatever. But like the older I got, I'm like, it might be my fault that I – it might not be my fault that mm-hmm. I'm like this, but mm-hmm. it is my fault if I stay Continue, like this. That's right. really good. And yeah. – and getting into like i think i might have been like 18 19 years old 2019 how was i maybe like 20 almost and i was just like dang like this is really me and so Mm -hmm. i um you know drove to galveston one day and um i was standing on some rocks and i was like really like considering attempting suicide Mm -hmm. um and like to get all the way to that point i really felt like was was rock bottom and um but it wasn't for me yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying not to. I'm trying to go fast. No, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're but it, it wasn't for me yet. You know, like I drove all the way out there. I stood out on the rocks. Like I knew. I thought that. You know, it's like four in the morning. The, the mm. waves crashing them rocks. I'm way out. So I know that if I jump, like I'm, I'm toast. Um, and I really was was considering that and really thinking about it because I felt like there's nothing else I can do because all I was doing at this point was hurting other people. Mm -hmm. There was uh, women in my life that told me, you're gonna, your your siblings are following you and they're gonna do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be just like you. And they said it in, in or this person might've said it in a spiteful way, Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I kinda was like, yeah, like, (laughs) I don't want my little brother to be doing this. Like, I felt like all I was doing was was hurting people and influencing other people uh, to hurt others. Um, And I I felt like powerless to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, so as I'm walking out on the rocks and as I'm walking forward, I don't see anybody as I'm walking down these rocks. It's just like, just me and the rocks. And then once I get to the edge, I hear a laugh. And it sounds like my little brother. Hmm. And like exactly like my little brother. And I turn around and there's this uh, this little boy and his father fishing off the rocks with like a light and everything. Like, no way did I miss them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but maybe I did, you know? Yeah. Maybe it was right behind me. Mm-hmm. But um, it kind of just brought me back and got me thinking like, um, like I can't do that because of them, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's got to be a way I can fight this or fix this or not Turn be this it person. Around, yeah. Um. So you know, I turned it around, and maybe for like two days was trying to do better or whatever, but just continued being the same guy, same mm-hmm. person, um, until one day, um, I had gotten so deep into what I was, what I thought about um, me and women and all this type of stuff. I had like this um list on my phone right of like all the girls that i could like try to talk to to get out of my toxic relationship like i just i was doing like you know the rate the way that seems right to a man you feel me so like i'm like this seems right to me i'm gonna make this list of women (laughs) and i'm gonna try each one it's always a good idea (laughs) talk to each one of them and and maybe uh i can get out of what i'm doing and be a better person because i'm I'm blaming it on like the women i'm talking to whatever i was doing they're wrong yeah yeah and um and so you know, I was sitting in the car with uh, the person I was in the relationship at that time, 
and um, she had found a little list or whatever and we got into it and she got out of the car and she left and it was maybe like two in the morning and I, that is when I really just felt like super duper lonely mm. like not it, it was the most random moment but that was like the lowest I felt was because yeah. it was like like somebody like looked at what I was trying to do and was like this is stupid yeah yeah and and you're still the same person mm -hmm. so it made me feel like my plan was yeah. still the wrong <laughs> stuff yeah, they revealed and, uh, yeah <laughs> and uh so got out and left and i'm just sitting there in the car by myself like feeling depressed feeling low and i don't know if you if you when you turn on uh the four fusion the 2014 version anyways it um it uh like it connects to your Bluetooth and plays a random song sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. And I had on I had a lot of songs in my phone, a lot of them, and only one of them was <laughs> had anything to do with Christ. <laughs> and uh, that one song is what started playing when wow. I turned the car on, and honestly made me think about uh, Bruce and what he said. He invited me to get rap maybe two months earlier than that, mm. and wow. I think it was a Saturday night, maybe like two three in the morning. I figured like okay, I can't go to sleep. I'm gonna just stay up. Wow. Right, and you don't know this part, but look, I don't. I said, right now, I'm like, I'm like, I'm yeah, like, man, yeah. you need, we need to talk more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I said, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just stay awake, um, and I'm gonna just drive uh, to Spring. It's about an hour away, so I'm gonna drive to my dad's house in Spring, and I'm gonna see if I can get like four or five hours of sleep there, and then I'm gonna head to church. I want to be there at ten because that's the, or I think it was ten thirty back yeah, then. Yeah. That's the one Bruce went to. I mean, I wasn't gonna tell Bruce or nothing. I was just gonna like just show up, and you know, I had like just like my slides on, whatever I was wearing, and I made the trip. And when I woke up in the morning to drive from my dad's house in spring to the church in spring, my back right tire was flat. Um, so I had to put some fix a flat in there and head to the church. Cause I was like, all right, I gotta go. And so when I got there, you know, usually at the church I went to before that, uh, briefly outside of my dad, my grandfather's church was Hope City. And that was the first time I think I felt the presence of God um, was whenever they were worshiping and I joined in and worship. And I began to feel the presence of God, and I felt like, oh, this is what I want to be, and this is where I want to stay. So, during worship, hold I'm, on, yeah. wait, right? right we're yeah. gonna cut you. We're okay, gonna yeah. cut you. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break. Okay, you guys, cool. stick around. We, now, gotta, we, like, gotta, no, find on, we gotta find out. We gotta find out. We gotta find out. Stick good, around. We'll be right back, you guys. Oh, that was like Welcome the longest back, commercial. <laughs> I felt like I was watching science. That was a cliffhanger. Um, cliffhanger. But we're back. Okay, so you, you, you've experienced the Holy Spirit before and then you come to get wrapped and then mm -hmm. you said worship started and then what? Yes, so like worship. I am like so excited for worship yeah. because Well, did I'm Bruce like, see you? Did, did he did he find I think out so. that you were there? I think okay, he okay. walked okay. in during worship and yeah. he came and gotcha. stood next to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sarah was there, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sarah and Maddie. Um, so um, I'm like waiting for worship because I'm like, this is it. Like, this is where God is going to just like bless me. <laughs> like, And so like the, <laughs> the whole worship, like, I didn't feel nothing. Oh my <laughs> like, God. Yeah, and I'm like, man, like, like it's almost like what I came for, mm -hmm. you know? It was like that, mm -hmm. that like emotional like feeling, and like mm -hmm. that's like what A I fix. wanted, yeah. right? Fix, exactly. Fix. You itching? Yes. <laughs> um, and so, but quick backtrack. Whenever I was during this whole 2019, the whole season, I kind of knew that I, I was leaning towards God. And I would ask him to reveal himself to me. Mm -hmm. Like I had switched like my major to religious studies because like I was that consumed with like knowing what the truth yeah. was because I started to believe that what I learned growing up wasn't the truth. And mm -hmm. I, I wanted to know what was the truth. Yeah. Um, and I asked God, please just reveal yourself to me in a way that I cannot deny, right. in a way that I can't deny because I was so skeptical of everything. I felt like I was smarter than everybody. Mm. Um, and so he would reveal himself to me in small ways. Like I'd ask him, Lord, please let us get the ball this drive. And we'd get the ball this drive. I'd just be like, <laughs> mm, nah, whatever. You <laughs> that know? was you. Like, it just happened. <laughs> yes. And every time I've said that in the game, it's happened. Yeah. But I'd, mm, nah. Like that's just that's just uh, coincidence. Another or whatever. sign, Lord, right. for pulse from yeah. the sky. You're yeah. like that ain't him either. No. <laughs> and I was like, it's got to be in a way that I can't deny. Period. Yeah. Um, and so I was praying that prayer uh, probably every night. Um, that was the only thing I was praying though, because mm -hmm. I couldn't pray anything else because I yeah. wanted to know yeah, if yeah. he was really there. Yeah. Um, and so you know, I pulled up to the church. Didn't really, I guess, feel worship. Yeah. Um, and so then I'm just like, you know, waiting for the sermon, and 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 Pastor Juan gets up there, and it's a it's a, a panel, it's a panel of people up there, and. Uh, I was I was really locked in. I was really focused, and they were saying some great stuff up there. But there was there was one time it was wow. in the first service. Pastor Juan got up there, and he just talked about uh, you coming to God no matter where you are, no matter where you are in life. That um, that the Father seeks your heart, and He seeks your heart for Him, mm -hmm. and to to not be afraid to come to Him wherever you are. Mm -hmm. You know, and He was like, you know, 
some people some people didn't want to come this morning some people something 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 and he was like you know somebody drove here with a flat back right tire this morning right wow. he said that <laughs> and, and so at that point like I was kind of tuned in you know what I'm saying but then yeah. I started being super tuned in I tapped Bruce I'm like Bruce and Bruce don't know he's like what is he talking Bruce about like, shut up yeah. listen <laughs> and I'm like nah bro my back flat right tire is flat and I had to park across the street because wow. I couldn't find get wrapped and I didn't walk in really early, so I'm knowing he didn't see my car. Yeah. And if you see my car, <laughs> it was fix a flat was in there, so you couldn't Man. even see wow. that uh, the the back flat right tire. Um, and so, so I was tuned in at that point, and I started to feel the presence of God just throughout the uh, throughout the sermon, and was invited to to go up there um, with the prayer partners and uh, just go and pray with them and, and join hands with them. And I had walked up, there was a spot available in front of a woman and I, I went to the woman and then there was a guy over there on the right dressed in normal clothes. Uh, it was pastor Vinny and he was like, no, nah, no, nah, you come here. So I was like, okay, like <laughs> cool. And so I walk over to pastor Vinny. Um, and he just, um, he asked me my name. I told him, you know, just what my name was. And, um, he didn't ask me what I needed prayer about or anything. And he just started like, just speaking to me um, and, and really telling me things that God was telling him. And he was mm -hmm. like, you know, the same way you were left in your car last night, sad, crying by yourself, feeling alone, wow. feeling lonely. God is telling you that he structured that in a way to so, that you, so that you could be here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't tell Vinny none of this. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So this is God's way of, of being course. like, hey, yeah, yeah, wow. you wanted something that you couldn't deny. Like, here it is right mm -hmm. here. And so Vinny just keeps going, um, just telling me, like, you know, I was just like you. I was left in my car. Um, just sad, depressed, broken down, just like you were last night. And that's what brought you here. And God is telling you to keep Dang. coming back to him. Keep leaning to him. He's there. He real. He, he loves you. And he wants you to be for him, mm. you know, and just to keep coming back to him, you know. And, and that's really what stood out to me. Um, and yeah, and, and from then on, it was like no question. It's I'm, on, yeah. I'm giving, it, and it wasn't, it wasn't like a slow, a slow like change or yeah. something. It was like right then, Radical. I just gave everything Amen. to Christ. Let's get and, Jesus. Yeah. Hey, Come on, and that, that Come on, Bruce. feeling you yeah, probably yeah, yeah. felt, Bruce, that day is kind of uh, like the day he won the <laughs> got into the NFL, right? It's the same oh, yeah. kind of like yeah. year. It was the greatest feeling for yeah. sure. Yeah. For years, right? Because you're like walking it out, and you're like, oh, yeah. And then you're Ugh. listening every single time. You're like, come That's on, bro. That's so fire. Yeah. Oh, listen, we got a little bit of time. Uh, we this got to be like a part two. We got to figure out. Okay. Somehow, some way, yeah. you know, yeah. we got to bring Bruce Dragon Lee. I'm still tripping <laughs> on the Bruce Dragon Lee. I'm tripping. On, this whole show was for me. Yeah. Like, I'm tripping. I'm just like, what's happening here? Yeah. I'm like, where am I? That was like, oh, of course, it, it awesome. got me. Yeah. You know, because I, yeah. I don't know. I. We love the Lord, and when you hear somebody say that you were speaking something like that, you know, it still hits me, like, in mm -hmm. a certain way where I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, thank you, Lord, you know, because yeah. yeah. just to really speak from a place that I, I don't know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, at that moment, yeah. you know, so it's it's just a beautiful feeling. But mm -hmm. let's go to a segment. Let's go to a segment, because now we know he's in the NFL. We know he got saved. We hear yeah. some of the story, which I would like to go more intricate into it, but I definitely want to do this because I feel like... Um, there's going to be power in the Dear Younger Me. Let's do Dear Younger Me. All right, so okay. Dear Younger Me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Back to the future. <laughs> hey, now, now we're like... Back to the future. Yeah, I'm all yeah. lost. I'm like, whoa, all the different pieces <laughs> that were orchestrated. So okay, back like, to the future. We're going to put you in the DeLorean. Take us back to a younger version of yourself, yes. right? Because we heard a little bit of the background. Mm -hmm. um, what age? And if you could give yourself a piece of advice that you know yes. now, what would you tell them? So I would just go say, hey, dear younger me, dear mm. younger college student, mm. um, walking mm. into college, walking into that building, um, where was I at? I was, uh, like I told you, I was uh, a bad guy, womanizer guy, um, yeah. consumed with the idea of having ladies, consumed yeah. with the idea of having one lady that was like above the ladies and like yeah. it was like you know consumed with that entirely yeah. Yeah. um and so you almost, see grant in the hallway right now yeah boom yeah what do you say then so what i say to him is like hey um you are idolizing women mm -hmm. you are mistreating quite a few of them but you are idolizing a relationship with a woman and you need to idolize the only relationship that can fulfill you. Mm. Um, all of these things that you're doing, um, this football stuff, um, even the stuff you're trying to do good with your siblings, like none of these things are going to fulfill you. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can possibly fulfill you is relationship with Christ. And I know 
that you really don't know what I'm talking about. And I know that you've never opened your Bible, and I know that you've never had genuine conversation mm. with the Most High. And I'm encouraging you right now, stop making all these mistakes that I know you're about to make, and it's going to help you be the person that you deep, 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 deep down want to be. Um, and you need to listen to Bruce. That's what I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He in the call. Listen yeah. to Bruce. All yeah. right, that's, that's so would, good. That's, that's what so good. Younger uh, me. And so, as a just real quick, as a um, friend and brother, you know, who's there watching him, um, what would you tell to encourage, you know, younger Bruce also, who's watching his cousin, his brother, a friend, you know, because some of some people mm, listening are that they're like, man, well, I didn't have that childhood or I didn't have that growing up, you know, I didn't really struggle with something, but I'm struggling with being set apart, like what you shared with us. So, what would you tell that person? Mm -hmm. So your question is, how should I influence him? Yeah, well, how younger? would you how would you encourage the younger version of yourself, you know, back then, okay. who is that friend, that brother to someone who is going through, you know, that crisis? Well, I think I did the best job I could. Yeah. Um, he wouldn't have listened to me regardless. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think I would have just tried to be there for him more, mm -hmm. you know, just show him action. I think I would have never probably left his side. Um, I would have, you know, tried to be his best friend, be around him as much as possible, and try to let my you know behavior rub off on him and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know trying to put him in the right direction instead of just always talking about it that's, that's cool good. that's, that's good. really good go i want to put you back in the delorean okay. so you didn't came back boom went 2022 i'm like y'all are going back bruce go with him <laughs> but I, i'm gonna put you back in the delorean and i want you to think of a moment um when you were young and uh maybe uh your dad's not there mm -hmm. right I just want you to go there to a moment where you're young, mm -hmm. you feel alone, you mm -hmm. maybe it's a moment where you're just in feelings. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say to that father that's not there to a young boy who yes. needs his dad? Like, what would you say to him? What I would say to that father is... Because you're talking to your father right now. Yes. Yeah. Then. So what, I what I would say to that father is, you know even though circumstances may not be the best right now, there's still an opportunity for you to be a dad. Mm -hmm. There's still an opportunity for you to show your child good things. There's still an opportunity for you to be a positive influence in their life. If not, just be a positive presence in their life. You know, because from my experience, the influence might be lost from father to son because some respect might be lost and you know i think that as a father like that's hard to deal with but you know what i'm saying you can still be a positive presence in your child's life and there is a reconnection that can happen you know and and it's it's i think that the biggest thing is owning up because as a son all you want to do is really receive that sorry all you want to do is receive that sorry and that my bad and that effort towards rekindling and doing better you don't want to receive that well uh you know my dad was uh my dad wasn't the best dad i forgave him like you don't really want to receive that because forgiveness is you, I think, you don't want to minimize the mm -hmm. yeah the, the offense yes. yeah yeah because i mean forgiveness i really think at the core of everybody's heart is there it's naturally there yeah um because at the core of our heart i mean god created us forgiveness is there um i don't think that you have to fight for that that's naturally a person does that yeah um but yeah, I would that's say just just understanding that it's not lost. Okay. Yeah. That's super dope. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna put you back in the car. You're still there. Yeah. So you didn't come back to 2022. Yeah. You went a, you went to another room. Mm-hmm. And there was your mom. Mm-hmm. And your little boy, and your mom's um, thinking about getting into the drug life, or maybe just mm -hmm. started getting high. Yes. Yeah. What do you say to that mom? I would say that um. I would say. What'd you tell her? She's right there. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> I would say, don't do it. Don't get into what, them drugs because yeah, well, what you know now what, what, you're gonna what? lose. You're gonna lose your family. You know it's gonna be super hard to get it back. You're gonna lose yourself, and it's gonna be really, really hard to get yourself back. And you're gonna end up. Your kids are gonna be trying to help you get yourself. Yeah. And I'm, I don't think you want to be in that situation. So I would tell you. I would tell her like, hey, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Stay off of them. You know, mm -hmm. focus on other things. It might not you might not make as much money to having another job or a lifestyle, but hey, working at Kroger is gonna allow you to still be in your your child's lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's you know? dope. That's dope. I, I, yeah. I like doing that because I feel like a lot of times there's probably a dad out there. Maybe you're locked up right now and you're listening to this and mm-hmm. you're that dad that has an opportunity or you're that mom. You know, so I, I yes. like doing that because, you know, I always say to myself, man, like, well, what I know now, you know, you ever said that if I could go back, mm-hmm. then we do know now. So mm-hmm. um, do you, if we can get squeezing a dear younger me, that yeah. would be dope. A, a dear younger I mean, no, no. Uh, you think you know you me, think you right? Know me, yeah. uh, that's how I was going to end it up with. Yeah. Okay, so, yes. all right, final segment. We've got about a minute and a half. You mm-hmm. think you know me. There's Let's probably, go with Bruce. Yeah, misconceptions, <laughs> right? You you experienced one earlier today, pre-recording. Uh, what, what are some misconceptions people have of you? They think something, and then you're like, nah. You think you know me? It's really like this. Hit us. So for me, they think I'm shy. You got to start with, you think you know me. <laughs> oh, okay. You think you know me, uh-huh. but I'm not shy. Uh-huh. I'm just reserved. You know, I'm, I'm the guy that's on the side. I pick up on game, pick up on knowledge. <laughs> I soak it all in. I hear everything everyone says. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, that's dope. And I love the Lord. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. fire, man. Mm-hmm. You, think we could, you, got, you got 50 seconds. You think you know right. me. You think you know me. Hit us. You think you know me because I just be posting everything and I'm just all out there. Um, and it seems like I really enjoy playing my sport. Um, I feel like <laughs> it seems sport. like I really enjoy doing what I do as a career. And at the end of the day, um, if I could do something else, I would want to, I really would want to speak to people and help people. Because sometimes when I'm out there on the field, I feel like I'm just playing a game and it doesn't have much weight. But I know that it does. Um, but if I could do something as a career that would be just as profitable, um, it would definitely be speaking to others, helping others holistically every day, all day. Because that's really what I'm passionate about, mm. way more than a sport. And let, cool. let me tell you, that's your cool. life is speaking. Yeah. Your life yeah. speaking more mm-hmm. than you know. Because we're seeing it out here. We're not yeah. in Tampa. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's speaking, man. So we want to thank you so much. Hey, you have a clothing line. Where can they find that? Apostle13.com, Apostle13 everywhere, every social media platform. That's mm-hmm. what's up. Dope. Where can they find you? Oh, Instagram, Grant Stewart. Grant you know Stewart. Saying? Come yeah. on. All you got to do is look up Mr. Relevant. Thank yeah. you so much uh, for being with us. You guys, you know, it was awesome. Uh, you know, the greatest one on the show today was Bruce Dragon Lee. <laughs> uh, but, hey, you know, now nah, y'all both were a blessing, and we just really appreciate you guys being with us. Yeah, thank Juan you. Martinez from This Is Real. And I'm Stephanie Rave, and we're so glad you joined us. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you get notified every single time we have a new episode. And don't forget, in Houston, Texas, on 100.7 FM, every single Saturday night, we're on the airwaves from 6.30 to 7.30, man, with real people, real problems, real solutions. The show is rocking. Amen. But not only that, not only is the show rocking, we're also reaching 53 cities, 51 state and county jails and prisons. And what we're doing is we're bringing the word to them. We're bringing them some laughter fire. and some good times and some fire. Amen. And so uh, for that, we need some partners. So if you want to partner with us, please click on the link below. And don't forget to follow us on social media, hashtag this is real or on any other platforms, Pastor Juan Martinez. Hey, that's a wrap. Peace.